on the screen in front of you, you can see a tier portal is our open engineering framework. And we have core parts of our uh, portfolio that, uh, that have just been upgraded to version 18. And version 18 is available to download from this link here, and it will run in trial version. So the core portfolio elements for tier portal are, of course, step seven. Uh, we have step seven safety, Synamics Drive, Simotion Scout, Sirius Simicode, and of course, WinCC. And then on top of that, we have various different add-ons, uh, such as uh, Simatic Energy Suite, PLC Sim Advanced. Uh, the latest version, version five, has a lovely new user interface available to it, which will be a, 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 you know, very welcomed in some areas. Uh, We've got tier portal openness, so the ability to automatically create your PLC application code, things like Simatic Visualization Architect or, or CVARC as it's known, which allows the automatic generation of, uh, of WinCC, WinCC screens. So all these version 18 updates are available from the service and support website using this one link. Um, so that includes step seven, safety, unified start drive, and so on. Uh, Simico DS and safety, uh, serious safety aren't yet released, but if you want to go to that link uh, on the right hand side of the homepage for Siemens Industry Online Support, you'll see some how to videos and using the how to videos, you can then register for updates. And as soon as this software becomes available, you'll automatically uh, get an update and get sent a link to it. So, so Tier Portal is our holistic engineering platform. It's one platform for all engineering tasks. Uh, we have one common database that that uh, allows us to configure uh, our PLCs, our HMIs, and our drives using uh, a standardised uh, um, engineering tool. Uh, so, so that includes, like I say, PLCs, HMIs, drives, communication. Uh, setting up our distributed I.O. for our controllers. Uh, so that's from an engineering platform perspective. Now, standardization is the key to digitalization. And within the tier portal portfolio, we have a library concept. Uh, and, and libraries, again, are, are an area where we can we can use libraries to, to standardize on our application code generation uh, and improve our software quality. Uh, which of course, if we if we know that we're taking blocks that are tried and tested out of a library, then that's going to reduce our time to program our PLC and time to get our product to market. So we have different different areas, or, or, or that we can we can store our libraries. We can store them locally within within Tier Portal itself. We can do multi-user engineering, or with a version control interface, we can interface into things like GitHub for uh, other version control software packages. So, so that's standardization, absolutely key. Another area uh, that's, that's important is integrated testing and simulation. So we have a package called Test Suite, which as an example, if you program your application code in conjunction with our style guide, Test Suite will actually test your application code for compliance against the style guide, but it will also test for compliance against your own company's standards. But not only does it test the quality and the format of the application code, you can also do uh, software and loop testing as an example with Test Suite and PLC Sim Advanced. We're also hardware and loop testing using open network standards such as OPC uh, UA. And that allows us to, to have a continuous integration approach. Uh, one of the key things within industry at the moment is OTIT integration. Uh, and we're going to take a look at some new elements in the portfolio where we've got uh, uh, more communication capabilities within our hardware platform. But of course, it's absolutely critically important that we're both secure. So we have state of the art security through TLS. Uh, we have open communication standards such as, as, as Profinet, which would be uh, uh, downstream or OPC UA, which would be upstream. Uh, or, or, or between PLC to PLC communications, as an example. So OTIT integration we're going to, to touch on. Uh, and of course, the, the next element would be our automated workflows. So we can see here, we can automatically create application code using standard libraries that have had a full integrated uh, uh, testing through Test Suite. Uh, they've been tested against simulation packages such as PLC Sim Advanced and Simit. So we know they're good quality uh, function blocks with no errors in them. And we can then use tools like TIA Openness to create, automatically create our PLC application code. And then to take it one step further, we've got uh, the tool CVARC, which allows us to automatically 
uh, create our, our visualization platform for things like uh, our uh, operator panels or, or um, future SCADA add-ins. So what, one, of, one of my favorite things around uh, our automated workflows is the TIA add-ins. Uh, and, and we'll touch on these in a, in a future session, but these allow us to do things like uh, serial drive commissioning. And these are areas that we can really save time in, in commissioning or creating our application code. So TIA add-ins are a, a, a real uh, feature of the future, if you like. So we'll cover those uh, at, at, uh, in a future webinar. Uh, Multi-user engineering, so the ability to uh, store our application code uh, on, on a server and have multiple engineers working at different disciplines. So a SCADA engineer working on one area, drives engineer working another, uh, teams working on different elements of, of function blocks, and that reduces the need for manual coordination across application code development when we can use multi-engineering and uh, multi-user engineering and a project server. Uh, so that's just a, a little insight into, into some of the features and functions of, of, of Tier Portal that we'll be covering in detail over, uh, not necessarily this webinar, but over webinars that we're going to host in the future that I'll come to uh, later on in our presentation. So one of the things that we just wanted to do quickly was just run through uh, some, some new introductions into the somatic, uh, somatic hardware portfolio. So You'll be aware it's, it's around about 10 years now since the S7-1500 was, was launched and released. Uh, and it's a, an absolutely fabulous controller. And you'll be very pleased to hear that it's uh, about to go through an innovation cycle. So uh, we're going to be updating not only the firmware to version 3, but it, there's actually going to be a hardware release for CPUs that are between the 1511 and 1516 controllers. And we're, we're switching to a different type. Of, of CPU manufactured by ARM, uh, and it's a dual core controller. So core one is going to uh, process the user program uh, and diagnostic events. And the second core is going to look after our communication tasks to ensure that we're ready for the OT layer to meet the IT layer of the future and that we can get data from our, our process or our machine and it's ready to be fed up into, into the cloud or into edge or for whatever types of, of analytics are necessary. So uh, of course, having offloading the communication tasks from, from the, the main core of the CPU uh, will we'll support more deterministic program processing. So there'll be, there'll be no processing time for the first core uh, dedicated to communication. So that, that core is just going to focus on uh, the user program and, and diagnostic events. And the second core will be there to focus on our TCP IP communications, our OPC UA communications, and other things that give us more operational transparency in terms of standards along the lines of MQTT. And of course, that's not forgetting our traditional communication protocols such as TCP IP. Uh, and UDP, but of course, Profinet is handled by its own dedicated ASIC anyway. So uh, another interesting thing about the CPU is that the display firmware will no longer uh, be separate to the main CPU firmware. So it effectively becomes a reduced uh, engineering task to do a firmware update on the processor. So that will uh, both encompass the, the CPU firmware and also the display firmware. So let's take a look in a little bit more detail around what's going to be happening with the CPUs. So effectively, we're going to have three classes of, uh, of CPU. So we're going to have the low performance class, which is the 1511 uh, and 1511F and the 1513 and 1513F, and they will have the same uh, basic performance. So in terms of scan times, they'll be absolutely identical. Uh, the difference between them will be memory. So you can see here a little bit of insight into how much memory. So we're going up uh, basically double the program memory and 50% more data memory. So the 1511 will go to 300K, uh, the 1511F will be 450, and the data memory is the same. And then we've got a, a very similar jump in memory. Uh, so 50% more data memory, 100% more program memory for the 1513, but the CPU performance will be the same, albeit, uh, it's increased by 60% for the 1513 and a 140% improvement in uh, execution time for the 1511. We then have the, the medium performance class, which is the 1515 and 1516. 
So the 1516 is having a 67% increase in performance. And if we look here, this is a huge performance increase on the 1515. Uh, so that, that will, uh, again, it will be along the same lines or, or it'll be exactly the same execution time for the application code. And we've got subsequent uh, memory increases again, twice the memory, 50% more data memory. But you can see there, that is quite a performance increase uh, for the 1515. And of course, this is... Uh, in addition to the um, increase in communication throughput. So I've, I've put a link here into a, into a great article that's been done by one of our colleagues in, in, uh, in our headquarters, which is uh, related to uh, where the additional performance can be used uh, and the, the benefits that it gives in allowing our CPUs to meet uh, automation challenges of the future. So again, uh, this will be available in the handout, but it's a nice it's a nice article to read just to give some insight into the background to the performance improvements uh, and where they can be used. So a little insight into availability. So the 1511 and 1513 will be available to order from January. But again, I'd suggest registering on, on CIOS. Uh, and then you'll get the update automatically when delivery release comes available. And the 1515 and 1516 will be available from February. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so, so there's some real performance improvements uh, in terms of the core elements of the portfolio. The 1517 and 1518, they stay unchanged. So just to give a bit of insight, uh, it, it, they typically have six megabytes of, of working memory. 30 megabytes of data memory so they're real animals in terms of their, their uh, automation capabilities if you like so i i just want to, to hold this thought here so the 1515 microprocessor that's going having a 400 percent improvement in terms of its um, uh, automation capabilities we also have a new element to the portfolio which is the 1514 sp so a new distributed controller which is available in T and TF functionality, but it has the same performance as the new 1515. So it's a real performant CPU, but based on the distributed controller footprint. Uh, and this device will be available from March. So, uh, it, you know, that's a really exciting device for us, something that can do uh, both safety and technological functions uh, with, within the distributed controller platform. Uh, one thing that I haven't mentioned actually is that all these new CPUs will be um, will be available to download into PLC SIM Advanced version five, which is the latest release of uh, PLC SIM, uh, which is also available to download from the link provided earlier, uh, but without the license. So. Another exciting addition to the portfolio, or, or, or not addition, or improvement, I should say, is uh, we now have R1 redundancy for the S7-1500H. Now, this, this doesn't mean if you've, if you've already got a 1500H, you'll be able to upgrade the firmware to version 3. So, so that's absolutely possible. So you can take advantages of the new features and functionality by simply upgrading your existing S7-1500H or FH to, to version 3 firmware. So there's no hardware changes required. But this new addition allows us to, with a dual interface module, it allows us to have one interface module reporting into the first CPU and the second interface module reporting into the second CPU. Uh, and that's along the lines of the traditional uh, MRP style networks that we, we had before we had this, uh, this R1 development. Uh, so this is a nice new addition to the portfolio. And then we've got the hot standby link between them. Something that's really cool is we've also got some, if, if you know of any tunnels that are 40 kilometers long, we now have new fiber optic sync modules that can go up to 40 kilometers. And I say tunnels, but any application that you need 40 kilometers, which is quite extreme uh, between your CPUs. But these can be can be used with both uh, ET200 SP, uh, ET200 SPHA, and ET200 ISP. Uh, can use this new R1 um, redundancy. And like I say, if you've got existing S71500Hs, you don't need to upgrade your hardware. You can simply upgrade them to version 3 firmware. And again, these can be simulated in PLC SIM Advanced version 5. So we can, we can do... Uh, R1 and S1 redundancy um, in, in PLC SIM Advanced V5. 
one thing that's very important to us and very important to you is compatibility and hardware compatibility. Uh, and, and one thing I'd just like to highlight is that the new processors are what we class as spare part compatible. And what that means is that if you've got an S7 1500 version 1 1.8 that was installed in uh, 2012, as an example, if something happened to it, it got damaged in any way, you'd be able to take the memory card out of that old unit, plug it straight into a new unit, and the unit would run in compatibility mode. So you wouldn't have to do any upgrades on the application code. It's just memory card out of the old one into the new one. Granted, the new CPU will run faster, but it's what we class as spare part compatible. So no changes required in the application code. Uh, and just uh, uh, that's, that's the same uh, across the board for all the 1500 Pro, uh, CPUs. And it doesn't matter what firmware you're on, you can take from, uh, from the older unit and drop the memory card into the new unit and it will run up uh, absolutely beautifully. Uh, Another thing just to highlight is the, these will be orderable from, from uh, January, as I've mentioned, February and March. Uh, we'll be delivering both the new firmware versions and the old firmware versions in parallel for the first six months. And then after a six month period, uh, all the orders that we've got in our system for the older uh, CPUs will be substituted for the new. So that will be from typically around about August, September time. Uh, everybody will be getting the new uh, the new version three CPUs. So uh, I think everybody will agree that's a, that's a, a real great thing to have and more performance, the uh, easier upgrade of firmware and the offloading of communication tasks to allow us to easily, easily integrate our OT layer into our IT layer and have high volumes of data throughput. Uh, 